Welcome back again to Time Barbarian. Last time we talked about needing to set up level flow and I have gotten that process started already while off camera. Let me take you through how the old code used to work and what I've set up so far. Now this is an example of, well this is level one, right? This is level one from the old code and this is how it worked. It was completely code based. So this is level one from the original game. Level one is, as you can see, a level. A level is really a series of waves. We ultimately decided to call uh, a level a stage. The, the in-game name for that was a stage, but we'll keep the code as level. Now, a level is made of a series of waves. A wave is like the egg wave. An egg wave happens and a certain number of eggs spawns. An enemy wave is a certain number of enemies spawning and so forth. There's many different kinds of waves. Now, in the code, the wave became the base construct for the logic of how the level sequence goes. Now, the concept of a wave starts off very designer friendly, like an egg wave. We have an egg wave where four eggs spawn. In fact, let's go and take a look at that. Um, there's an egg wave where four eggs spawn. And we have a little mechanism here where we can override the title of the wave so we can give a custom title to that wave. And then after our four eggs, we do another egg wave of six eggs each. So I have started by porting some of the base of this code over. Uh, let's take a look at that. And what I'm doing here is moving away from this coded approach for creation of levels into Unity's construct, which is scriptable objects. So let's take a look <clears throat> at where we are so far on that. Let's start with level. A level is now a scriptable object. Uh, and from the main menu there, from the creation menu, you can create a new level. The level will be a series of waves, just like the old one was. Uh, only now it's public, so that uh, the idea is you will, in the editor, add waves, as opposed to doing that in the code, as we're doing here. So this is doing it through the code. We're going to replace this step with a, an editor dropdown. OK, uh, let's take a look at a wave then. What is a wave? The wave just ported this code over, but also made this a scriptable object. Now you'll notice there's no creation for the wave class. That's because wave is just the base class that specific types of wave like the egg wave will inherit from. And so we do have an egg wave and the egg wave has a specific creation option. So you don't get to create a raw wave. You have to create some type of uh, child class of the wave. All right, and so we just poured it over all the code straight over from the old. Um, some of it doesn't really seem applicable yet, uh, like the draw. Um, We'll need to come back to that. But the rest of it is, as you can see, it's, it's really sort of an API, um, uh, an interface class almost, with lots of virtual um, functions to be overridden in the child class. Let's look at EggWave. EggWave has um, three types of eggs and how many of them. And then there's this uh, total time, which is how long it takes for the eggs to spawn. And you'll notice that in the original, we don't typically have any time given. And so I'm using a zero time to do what the old one did, which is to, it is a formula for how fast to spawn the waves. Okay, and so uh, that's all pretty good. Um, and this is just all ported from the original code, and we've got that much working. Let's take a look at how a level is set up. 
in the resources folder, I have a levels subfolder and here's level one. So I just created using this menu, create a level. And this is my first level. And I've got, so far I've got three waves, three waves in here. And now we're gonna to start to see how the concept of wave is less designer friendly when we start to break it down. Um, but we do have an egg wave. Uh, and I'll take all, this, all the waves that are a part of level one and I put those into a level one folder. And so egg wave 1A. Here's our four, uh, here's our four eggs and the total time has been filled in as four. That's curious. Um, let's put that back to default. I'm curious to see whether my code that calculated that right over here, in here, and when you start the wave, I said, if your total time isn't specified, recalculate the total time. Now, I was thinking the way that would work is it would load in an instance of this scriptable object and that would just be affecting the instance and would not affect the resource itself. Um, but that could be incorrect. Let's find out. And in fact, let's find out right now. We're going to launch. Yeah, look at that. The, the egg wave itself has modified that. Um, and that's going to prove to be a problem. Okay, so we just learned something about these scriptable objects. Um, that deserves a little bit more depth of research. Um, that, that these being edited by the game actually affects the, the scriptable objects themselves, and we may need to deal with that down the road. Let's take a look at why that single line do egg wave has turned actually into already two waves in the scriptable objects. All right, what was do egg wave? Do egg wave, uh, I think was part of level. Do egg wave, yeah. And you can see I have all these, these are actually helper functions. They're, uh, they don't create just a wave. Here's do egg wave. Do egg wave calls do egg wave no wait, and then not only adds, does whatever that does, but also adds three more waves after itself. Because waves became a programming logic construct that um, was very versatile and reusable, but it's not super designer friendly. So when I say do egg wave, I actually create the egg wave and then follow that with a command that says, wait for all the eggs to spawn and don't advance, don't advance to the next wave until all the eggs have spawned. And then this pair, which says um, create an enemy wave with no enemies in it, and then create uh, another wait wave. And the wait wave, here waits for those enemies to be destroyed. And since we didn't spawn any enemies, it's just gonna wait for all enemies to be destroyed. So this, this triple here waits on the eggs, and then this pair says, and then wait for the enemies to all be cleared. So you know, when, you, when the eggs hit the lava, an enemy pops out. So we wanna wait until not only have the eggs all spawned, but the eggs have all either been picked up or have hit the lava, their enemies have spawned, you have killed those enemies and picked up any way any eggs that they dropped. So you have to clear the board. Um, and so that's what this, this construct here is. Um, and the, the idea of do egg wave was a helper function that wrapped all that up. Let's see if we can do a similar sort of wrap up. My first plan 
is to just create an egg wave and then to have the start of the egg wave insert the weight after itself in the loop. Um, and if, if I can do that, then what I can do is pretty quickly then port these things. I just have to take these lines and port them in to that insert. Uh, but now what I'm thinking is when I do that, I'll be altering the actual level. I don't want that to happen. I want to be altering an instance of the level. So possibly the answer there is just to instance the level as opposed to loading it raw. I'm going to put a public pool weight on eggs equals true public bool and weight on enemies equals true. We're going to do public add wave wave new wave comma um, wave after wave I'm going to say uh, let's avoid uh, int insert at equals um, m waves dot count. Okay, we're going to say if null is not after wave insert at equals m waves dot index of after wave and I'm gonna say plus one and then I'm gonna say m waves dot insert insert at comma new wave let's do it right up the front Wait, uh, I'll put an if here. If m wait on eggs wait on wave the level is level get dot add wave wait comma this so add the wave after myself that wave and the egg wave will immediately add the weight for itself seems about right the only problem here is that I end up with this inserted wave in here so I wonder if my level launcher could simply make a copy. Uh, all right, and we say level equals instantiate. Can I make a copy with instantiate level? And then I think I can unload resource resources dot unload asset load level dot asset can I do that um, well, let's find out okay it did not modify this but this is not so good <laughs> okay uh, that wasn't good if m wait on enemies, we're going to add another one. We need to wait for the enemies as well. Enemy wave, which I haven't ported over yet, I don't believe. Create enemy wave. Seems good so far. Uh, the spawn factory. 
We don't have a spawn factory. Uh, instead, and maybe we maybe we will uh, in the future. Instead, put a wrapper on that. Like if false. Else, if the spawn factory's purpose was to take a spawn type at, by name and spawn that, um, and we don't have that mechanism yet, so what we'll do is we'll say Now our little text of end of egg wave should not come up until the eggs spawn their enemies and those enemies are killed. Okay, we've got enemies. Let's go killing some enemies. Okay, and just to double check it, we're gonna kill this enemy here. And let the egg let the egg spawn and kill that enemy and we'll collect it boom all right so that's really slick that's super nice um, okay uh, that that's not there and it crashed again so I think that's got it um, I can't unload it until the level's done and then let's say here, bug log level over. Egg me, egg me. Boop. Level over. And no crash. All right, excellent. So that's a really good place to be. We can create a level now as a scriptable object. Um, I have, uh, I'm putting that in resources so that it can be loaded and instantiated. So you'll create a scriptable object and it's a series of waves. Um, not super pretty down the line. If there were any designers on the team, we'd want a custom editor so that you can maybe have a, a better way of viewing how this works. Um, but for now, you can create a wave and add it to your list of waves there to create your level sequence. So supported right now, we have egg waves, we have enemy waves, um, and we actually have a text wave that just prints out debug text. Um, what did we discover along the way? We discovered a couple of things. One of the most... Uh, useful I think pieces of information is that you do want to instantiate a copy of your scriptable asset unless you're editing the asset itself or perhaps if you're not editing like for example these egg waves I learned that if you change one of their public variables that will reserialize it um, and when you're playing in the editor at least it will reserialize that and you don't want to. So you need to be careful about ever changing the public values of a scriptable object. Avoid doing that. Um, if you're gonna do that, then first instantiate a copy of your scriptable object. Uh, and so we've put that together so that an egg wave automatically adds the weight at the end um, for itself. All right, excellent. Um, we'll call it there and I'll see you next time. Um, not sure what we're gonna do next time. Maybe we'll, um, we'll finish up level one and actually create a, a level flow sequence from level one to level two. All right, see you next time.